Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the VAA for inviting us to speak at this presentation today. Uh, I think it's a great effort and I congratulate the VAA on conducting this small enterprise and recreational beekeepers conference. Uh, I think it's something well overdue, so congratulations to Andrew and the committee. My name is Donald Muir. I'm a director of Bee Qual and Bee Trace, which is the Australian honey industry owned QA and food safety handling program. We've been very involved in the last three or four years in honey testing. And why it was because if you'll all remember, three, four, five years ago, we had a lot of adulteration claims made against Australian honey. It damaged the industry significantly. Many people are still recovering from that uh, episode. So we said we need to develop a comprehensive testing library to satisfy the current codex, facents and international bodies. And that would, we in our mind, give the industry the ability to rebuff any adulteration claims in the future, to build good scientific evidence to prove authenticity, to distinguish our unique honeys, and to give an input into traceability and labelling integrity. And lastly, and importantly, to develop our industry's true worth. Very simply, only good science will rebuff adulteration claims. Even two days ago on SBS, there was a, an item about adulteration of honey. So those claims still hang around the Australian industry. So we uh, applied for a grant from the federal government and we're lucky to get that. And uh, we, from that grant, developed the Australian Honey Library Database complete with testing regimes. Now we called interest from suitable Australian testing laboratories. All had to undertake a FRAPIS standardisation test and this ensured that all labs conducted tests in the same methodology. We didn't want laboratories testing for codex in one way or another way. We wanted every person in our program to be doing exactly the same tests, exactly the same methodology. Once those standard operating procedure SOPs were developed, we then selected the labs that we wanted to deal with. The first round of tests included the 10 codex standards. Later, through UWA, we developed HPTLC testing, high performance thin layer chromatography, and that just gives a better signature of the honeys, the pollen and the nectars. Uh, so it's just another, I guess, safeguard that if we miss something on our codex tests, there's a very good chance we'll pick it up through HPTLC. So the codex, the harmonised methods we used included 10 subtitles, 10 subtests, moisture, pH, conductivity, HMF, diatase, insolubles, fructose, glucose, sucrose, and maltose. A couple of those terms some of us might not under, fully understand. I think the, the two big ones are HMF and diatase. HMF is an organic compound known as 5 hydromethylfurylfuryl It's formed from reducing sugars in the honey and it will increase with poor storage or bad storage. And diatase in honey is the test that tests the converting of starches to short-term sugars. And again, that happens in poor storage areas or applications. So, <clears throat> as I said, the sample test, moisture is a maximum of 20% under codex, pH 50, conductivity 0.8, HMF 40, but in tropical regions, that's from Rockhampton up, we can have up to 80 milligrams per kilogram. Diatase in the shade scale is 3. Insolubles, 0.1. Fructose, glucose, the sum, not more to equal 60%. And sucrose, less than 5. So they were the 
boundaries that we had to operate within. You'll note now I've just taken some typical results from our honey library. These are four samples of yellow box that came from central New South Wales and Victoria. Central New South Wales, slightly hotter, drier climate, and Victoria, these samples came out of the uh, Strathbogies up near Benalla. So again, hot in summer, but a little bit cooler in the winter. As you can see, every one of those 10 sub-tests were well, well under the codex requirements. So from that, we can say that those samples conform absolutely perfectly to the codex honey requirements. Now, we have tested, I think at the moment, around about 800 odd tests. Out of that 800 odd tests that we've done from honeys from every state of Australia and territory, including the Northern Territory, we have not had one sample of honey fail the codex test. That's a fantastic achievement when you think about it. Not one hundred, not one honey out of our 800 has failed our tests. When we did the collections, we only used our BQOL members because BQOL is a very heavily audited system. They do an annual audit uh, with an independent auditor who goes to their sites. We developed an app that they had to use, and that app had a whole list of questions about the collection procedure, temperatures, wind directions, GPS, hive locations, absolutely everything we needed to know that could affect the honey in some way. So we were very confident with the honey test results from both Codex and HPLC. So I said 800 odd uh, tests. There is about 800 eucalypts in Australia, so we've got a lot of more to testing to do yet. But where we are now is we have good science backed by NATA laboratories, backed by the University of WA that can help us make those claims that our honey is pure. Now, the next step to the honey library is that we want to integrate that with traceability. We need to develop marketing stories or unique honeys backed by our testing. And we're using QR codes or other devices now, we've started a trial in Tasmania with Manuka Honey using a RFID code. Through the University of WA, Mark Business School, we've developed some case studies or marketing stories around honey. So you might look at Leverwood. We'll say where that's come from, what tree produces it, where it's produced predominantly in Tasmania, the areas will give the codex um, test results. And then beside that, there is the honey sample or the honey jar test results. That's giving people proof that what they are buying should meet their full satisfaction and give them confidence that they're getting pure honey. Uh, we're looking still at different coding. Uh, my personal preference is that I think it'll probably end up going to a, a QR code or a, a bar scanning code linking back to this independent um, web page. It'll just pull up the particular honeys that you're telling the story about. Because there's no doubt that we have to sell honey as a fine food. There is no future in the Australian honey industry if we can't in develop higher prices. We've got... A shortage of bees coming up for various reasons. We know we, we just have to get prices up for people to survive. So by selling it as a fine food, hopefully we can move our price up because there's no future for us selling honey at $3.85 to a packer. So the codes will direct to this library. They'll present the story of authenticity and providence. Uh, we think that has a, a great market for people selling at farmers markets, which I guess many of you are. It will also help our members in more remote country areas who are selling direct to the local community grocer or IGA store. So that's something we'll work on over the next two years. Another thing we need to look at in our industry and to encourage is correct labelling. 
uh, the days of having organic honey because you've got honey from your backyard and you don't spray so you call it organic they're gone you cannot do that now so I'd ask you to go to the original label tool at dotbusiness.gov.au click on that and that will tell you exactly what you have to have on your labels for honey labeling well worth spending five minutes going through it to get your labeling right so before we finish uh, as I said earlier we're very happy to support the VAA I think it's a great co uh, conference and a great idea to have it um, I'll become a bit of a car salesman now as a conference special uh, we will offer any attendee attending a first year membership discount of half price so for $99 including the GST you'll get full membership features to be traced um, you'll get access to our hive management app and you'll get an online audit once you complete your audit you then will have a certification to high Australian industry standards that you can put that logo on your jar and use it as a selling feature full membership in the following years will revert to $175 plus GST and that's a full calendar year so I'd encourage you to go to www.btrace.com.au and just scroll through the web page we've tried to put everything in there we can to tell you about the program uh, but do not join online uh, our pay portal will only accept full payments so you'll need to email admin at btrace.com.au state that you wish to join the VA offer and we'll send you an application form and the membership invoice via email fill those out send it back to us and uh, you will then receive your supplier manual and the other documentation that you'll need to join the program uh, lastly btrace is owned by Arbic so by joining you are actually supporting the Australian honeybee industry in our efforts to uh, improve the industry generally so thank you very much so again thank you for your time and uh, we look forward to hearing from some of you thank you Andrew thank you to the committee for inviting me to speak thank you <laughs>